so my name is Kyle Davis. I'm uh, one of the original members of TOPS, uh, the Ohio Paranormal Society. Yeah, I know original after TAPS and all that, but it gets the point across. Um, pretty much we deal with anything that, uh, well, is paranormal. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, mostly it's a lot of haunting type of things. Uh, we've gone to several locations that are just basically uh, presumed haunted. Some of them are more touristy based, uh, but we have investigated some uh, private homes. Some uh, private individuals thought they had something going on. They called us up and we usually spent the night there to see if we can prove or disprove what they're uh, seeing or feeling. And uh, sometimes we're able to help them and other times we come up short. Um, and I mean, if anyone's seen shows like Ghost Hunters or things like that, I'd say we're more inclined towards those sort of methods. Um, in general, the organization we do is a little more, um, I'd say faith-based, Christian-based, but we do have some members that aren't solely based on that. Uh, we have a couple that are very, it, how the best to put it, they're very knowledgeable about uh, the occult and supernatural, which includes various uh, beliefs. Not everything can be fit into a uh, Judeo-Christian model sometimes, and having that uh, aspect has certainly been beneficial in the past, especially for a, another point of view for uh, certain cases. Um, we've been essentially doing this on and off for, I'd say, probably the better part of 10 years. Uh, myself and a few friends before we joined up with uh, Mark Roby, he's the uh, founder of the of to uh, TOPS. Before we joined him, we kind of did our own thing, wasn't nearly as formal. Um, mostly it was just me and a couple friends in our uh, high school years having nothing else to do uh, in a small town. So we'd go around trying to find uh, anything creepy and paranormal to see if we can stir things up and have something to do on a Saturday night. Obviously that uh, changed after we met Mark. We've been doing more uh, formal investigations. Um, we haven't done it nearly as often as we'd like uh, based on uh, our individual personal situations and um, things like that. We uh, haven't been able to do any uh, investigations since COVID happened because unfortunately though I don't think a ghost can catch it I think the people that we deal with may so we've been having to keep our social distancing um, and that and usually ghosts aren't as nice about staying away from you sometimes except for me they don't like uh, being around me too much um, but we've been doing this on and off I'd say for a better part of 10 years um, been to several different places across Ohio, as well as uh, one location in uh, Kentucky. Um, uh, if there's anything in particular you'd like to ask or go with that or the equipment we use, I'll be more than happy to answer questions. Um, well, I know, though, going off of kind of one thing that you said that you said that potentially the, the paranormal don't like you or don't like being around you, is there a specific reason or story behind why you I, say that? For the most part, everyone in our group has had one experience to another. I have not. I, I've been doing this for a while, and other than the general feeling of unease in certain locations, I have not had any actual experiences. I mean, usually, even when we do a, an EVP session, an electronic voice phenomenon, if we, where we have a recorder going, very often when I'm around, nothing happens. And then as soon as I leave, everything goes crazy. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I wish I do. But uh, so far, I haven't had the uh, pleasure or possibly displeasure of having my own paranormal experience. You see, I always like everyone that I know has also had experiences, but I haven't had one either. So maybe there is something out there. If I could figure out the commonality, that'd be great. But so far, I haven't been that lucky. Yeah, and if you ever figure it out, let me know. Yes, yes. Same if you figure it out. Yeah.
Um, I know you also mentioned, of course, like an EVP. Um, what are some other equipment that you guys use and kind of how, how do they work, essentially? Well, the equipment you use can be as simple or as extravagant as, honestly, your budget. Uh, back in those early days, pretty much all we had was um, a truck, a, a few flashlights, a couple voice recorders, uh, cameras, voice, uh, video cameras. This predated having smartphones, so we couldn't just use our phones to uh, document uh, paranormal activity. But at the same time, we've, over the years, we've gotten more equipment. Um, night vision cameras, thermal imaging cameras, um, things that we can hook into our computers to be able to record all of this. That way we don't have to hopefully have as many wires running. We've gotten a lot better at not having uh, miles and miles of wire connecting uh, cameras all over a location. Instead, having wireless uh, cameras and things like that. Um, We've used basic thermometers just to de determine if there's any uh, temperature shifts that's often a uh, uh, com combined with uh, paranormal activity and uh, voice recorders, things like that. Even uh, EMF detectors, electromagnetic fields. Um, oftentimes pa the paranormal says to give off fluctuations in the EM EMF, which honestly, if you, you can detect that uh, using a simple handheld device. I think they even have apps on your phone now, which we tend to shy away from thinking they're not as reliable, but anything electronic gives off an electromagnetic field. Some things uh, give off stronger, um, which is common in older houses. Usually the electrical systems aren't nearly as insulated as the modern versions. So they give off more electromagnetic fields, which some science has indicated that just the those sort of fields can give uh, maybe the illusion of the paranormal uh, issues with hearing or seeing things, feelings of dread, uh, headaches, things like that, if the field is strong enough. So that's usually one thing that we'll look into, even if it's not paranormal, it could have an effect on people that may think it's paranormal. Now, do you ever use stuff? Because I know from all the various YouTube videos and TV shows, I've also seen things like spirit boxes. And I, I'm trying to remember the one that goes, is that also the one that goes through the radio frequencies? I believe so. Um, we've often talked about getting one of those. I'm not sure if we've actually got to that point yet, but that was one of, uh, it's one of the items on our wish list to at least experiment with, see how it works. My understanding is it's essentially a modified radio that constantly is on scan and then paranormal uh, entities can interact with it to kind of use that as a way for them to communicate. Um, personally, we haven't used it, but it's definitely one we'd be interested in using at some point. Yes. Where do I get your money to buy these um, equipment? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, we all have day jobs, so this is kind of our hobby. Um, since we're not on TV, we don't get any big sponsors or anything like that. Um, each of us have our own day jobs. Mark and a, a couple others are in IT, which is very helpful, especially considering the amount of equipment we have. They're able to maintain it, things like that. But it's one of those things that over the years we've accumulated equipment. But like I said, back in when I was doing this in, the, in high school, all we had were some basic cameras, a handheld tape recorder, literally it had tape back then, um, walkie talkies to make sure we didn't get lost from each other and basic voice recorders you can get from Walmart. I mean, back then it wasn't anything too extravagant. We were mostly just going out to see what we can find with no expectations. And sometimes it, we came up with stuff, other times we, well, we just uh, got cold, uh, cold and wet depending on the weather. Another, another question. Uh, what has like what have you like witnessed though? Like what do you say? Like what have you witnessed about the oh. paranormal? Yeah, so what kind of things I know specifically to you, unfortunately you haven't um had any personal experiences, but what sort of stuff have like you and your seen team and seen and witnessed? Uh, for the most part a lot of it is um voice recordings. We'll get uh ask certain questions. Sometimes we'll get um, 
usually it's very short answers. Um, trying to think back to a couple we've had before where it's kind of hard to tell what it what it says, but if you uh, clean it up a little bit, you can kind of make out a few words. Um, we did have video, one uh, the first time we uh, worked with Mark, we went to a place called uh, Prospect Place in uh, outside Dresden, Ohio. It's a famous place with the Underground Railroad. We went there and things that occurred, which unfortunately we lost the video from that. Uh, one of the other members was asleep in the haunted house. And yes, that's what we would do on occasion. We'd actually sleep in the same place we're seeing if there's anything paranormal. The um, video showed his, uh, his, essentially his blanket moving and his foot reacting to something essentially touching it, move, movement around there. So that was one of the uh, bigger bits of uh, uh, evidence that we had, which unfortunately we lost. That uh, there was a computer issue and we don't have that anymore. And I know but a lot of it's uh, EMPs. Yeah, I know sometimes the idea is that when like footage and stuff is lost, that, that also in and of itself is, you know, like, because I know there's also instances of batteries suddenly draining themselves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which we've had that actually happen to us before we'd uh we'd go out to supposedly haunted areas uh cemeteries things like that uh one of it one of the places was from our hometown um um mary stockham cemetery uh, her grave specifically and one of the supposed things that would happen is people would be driving around there and their cars would die well it didn't, our car happened to die on our way back into town so we that was probably the closest we had to something happening that but uh it was just more i'd say ironic than possibly paranormal but are there other questions before i go into the ones that students have written now um i think you did. all right um i know another one which i should have asked earlier but what kind of um made you want to start investigating the paranormal so how did it all start I have strange friends. <laughs> uh, my my oldest friend was also one of the original members, uh, Aaron, me and he, uh, he's always been very interested in the uh, paranormal, the occult, things like that. He's literally been studying stuff since elementary school. And that is not an exaggeration. He's been studying this stuff for years. And eventually he got to a point where he started talking to me about it, mostly to bounce ideas off of uh, things he learned about. But uh, honestly, it kind of happened back in 2005. I can say that because two, two shows came out. Um, Ghost Hunters, which I'll be honest, I watched for a little while, but eventually dropped off on it, but definitely got it interested. And uh, Supernatural, oddly enough. So those two started, got, got me interested. And from there, we just kind of turned it into what we've been doing now, which is um, investigating when we can, but unfortunately your opportunities haven't been as good lately as we'd like. Yeah, understandable. Um, and what exactly, this is one question I had from a student, what is the purpose of paranormal investigators? Like what exactly are they doing and why? Well, it, it kind of varies depending on the, what we find, which, uh, some places, um, like Prospect Place, there was a uh, opera house we went to in Kentucky. There were places that weren't so much residences, they were just uh, attractions that part of the uh, idea was people come there because of the, supposedly it's haunted. Places like that mostly were just looking for evidence of the paranormal to substantiate some people's claims, uh, personally try to see if we can find something. Uh, when we're investigating a private residence, usually it's to try to help them understand what's going on. Not as many people, even still today, are as familiar with the paranormal, short of horror films, things like that. So we just try to help them either substantiate what, they're, what they've been claiming has been happening, or at least maybe help them out in finding what could have caused uh, what they think is happening. And with the paranormal investigations that you've done, how many times has it been like, yes, it is something paranormal versus, oh, we were able to find this or that? 
I'd say a majority of the time we're able to find something that reasonably explains what was happening. Um, we haven't come across too much that we can say 100% sure, yes, there's no other option that this is paranormal, but we have run into it like EVP sessions, things like that, where we can't exactly explain what it was. We can't rule out the paranormal, but we can't also rule out anything that could have been natural. So far, we haven't had any experiences that I would say, yes, for 100%, this is paranormal, there's without a doubt. But we, at the very least, we can get some ideas as to what possibly could have been, see if we can actively debunk it, which sometimes we'll do that if we're on a site. Um, try to do different things, try to find a way to mimic what the claims are, and if we can come up with a reasonable explanation, we'll try to keep it that way, but we always try to stay open-minded for anything that could be paranormal or just normal and strange. And when you are debunking, what are some potential examples of, you know, things that you have found that are, are debunked. So what is some stuff, um, like common things that are sometimes misconstrued as paranormal? Um, one of the common ones is actually uh, the uneasy feelings, which usually we can attribute it to uh, bad wiring in certain places. Um, they can, they've been known to have issues with people about um, causing headaches, uh, feelings of dread, seeing or hearing things. So finding, uh, Poor wiring is usually a big one. We can try to debunk a lot of their feelings about uh, the paranormal. Granted, that doesn't necessarily mean right away that everything they're saying happened wasn't paranormal, but it's one thing that they can try to address and see if that helps alleviate some of the symptoms. Um, certain light sources or, or cars going by could cause uh, different uh, sounds or even sights depending on the light uh, lighting and the certain acoustics of a place. Uh, same thing for an e, uh, EMF, or sorry, EVP, where just the uh, houses of a sound could cause, make it uh, not quite sound normal, um, just based on old houses, essentially old houses, just uh, settling or uh, maybe a sound carrying more than what normally should be from one end of the house to another, that those are, typically things that we'll run into and maybe try to reenact to see if it's has a reasonable explanation. Um, and of the places, and I know for confidentiality, can't get into too much detail sometimes, um, but what have been your favorite places um, that you've gotten to investigate or explore? Um, I'd say one of the best ones was definitely Prospect Place, um, mostly because we've gone there a couple different times. It's it's a, it's a very old building. It's very rich in history, and there's a lot of uh, things that supposedly have happened there, which um, I don't know if too many are familiar with it. If you would take a look at it, just Prospect Place. Uh, I think it's Trinway, Ohio, technically, outside of Dresden. Um, where it was part of the Underground Railroad. There have been uh, various deaths, mur including murders there. And just the building itself, uh, it's being constantly being renovated and it hasn't quite been restored to its original glory, but it's one of the places we like to go simply because it's got a lot of history and we've, it's one of the first places we've gone to that was more of an official uh, investigation than most. Um, a couple of the other houses that we've been to, it, we've gone, uh, able to help out some of the people that, that live there, um, try to explain things, because oftentimes they just don't know what's going on, and trying to give them some understanding as what could be happening is often enough to at least put their minds at ease to some extent, and if it continues happening, obviously we're more than willing to come out and try to help them out as well. Now, when you are investing areas, um, it looks like a lot of them are potentially homes and stuff, um, but are there ever instances where, you know, you feel scared um, or instances where you don't feel safe in certain locations? Um, some of the locations that there was an issue of safety, it was more 
structural than paranormal. <laughs> we had, the buildings themselves weren't necessarily as stable as we would like. Um, I'd say maybe not so much afraid of what could be happening at a particular house. Simply, I'd say, at least personally for me, it'd be more unsettling. Um, certain places, um, the last one we went to was the Opera House in Kentucky. Pretty much the main uh, theater area was very unsettling for pretty much everybody. Uh, and everyone else goes into the main theater saying they're feeling certain things, being touched, hearing noises, and then I do a walk around and there's nothing. Um, I've mostly just found uh, essentially a, a breeze from a gap in a door that could have caused some of the effects, but I'd say for the most part, I wouldn't, wouldn't think too many places have actually scared me out, sh out short of physical safety. And kind of going along that, um, if you don't mind us asking, kind of what are your personal beliefs of the paranormal? Like, do you believe in it? And if so, what is the paranormal to you? Um, yes, there's, there's certainly something there. Uh, there's been a long history of things that cannot be explained. Can we eventually understand it? Sure. We're just not at that stage yet where we completely understand what's actually happening in some cases. That I think is another reason we're investigating because everyone's got their own beliefs, um, including spiritual beliefs. What happens when people die? What happens with that? We just don't understand it. And that's part of investigating to see if maybe we can get a glimpse into what actually is going on and maybe try to understand a little bit more. There's certainly things out there that I can't explain. Have I personally experienced many of them? Not so much, but I am not going to doubt anyone that says they have because there's, I'm not going to admit that I know everything and anyone that does, they'll be proved wrong about two seconds after saying that. Um, another question kind of just overall, um, for anyone that, you know, is hearing this and, you know, find this, this interesting and they want to get into, you know, potentially being a paranormal investigator, how does one get started? Like, how do you kind of build off of and kind of turn it into, you know, maybe even more than a hobby? Right. Um, well, kind of what we did, um, it was myself and a couple friends that, we kind of did our own thing, mostly just going to different places in our county, um, places that have, at least in our county, have had legends about uh, certain paranormal experiences, activities, things like that. Um, and just kind of testing it out ourselves, getting some basic equipment, which honestly now, most of it you can get on your cell phones. Uh, a few other odds and ends you'd be able to pick up at a Walmart or Amazon fairly cheap. Um, but if you're wanting to get into other places, what we did was we contacted Mark, who had, I think at that time, the original version of Tops, which that's how we wanted, we went to Prospect Place. We essentially, essentially we joined his group because we wanted to go to Prospect Place. Problem is, back then our funds weren't uh, very, very good. So we teamed up with them to be able to go to a haunted location such as Prospect and that's kind of the that'd be a good place to start if you're interested in doing investigations look in your area see if there's any uh, local groups or anyone that might be uh, also interested in it uh, you'd be surprised what you can find if you just do a google search uh, after I'd say ghost hunters there's been quite a few different groups that have popped up and it's like anything else. It's like any sort of organization. Some are better than others. Do your research, see which ones work best with you. And I mean, worst case scenario, you go out with the investigation with them. And if it works great, if not, maybe try a different group and see how they handle things. Um, I know another question that we got from a more business oriented student. Um, they were asking when you do these paranormal investigations for, you know, clients, 
Um, do you get paid? And if so, and if you're willing to disclose on average, how much? If we get paid, I have not seen any of the money. Uh, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, we mostly do this out. Everything's out of pocket. Um, we don't really have any sponsors. Every, all the equipment we have, we've uh, paid for ourselves. The time spent, gas, mileage, uh, hotels, anything like that, it's usually out of pocket. So it's definitely more of a hobby than a business for us. Um, practically speaking, unless you have a TV show, there's probably not a whole lot of people that do this to get paid. Those that do, we've, we're kind of apprehensive about, uh, mostly because we're not quite sure what they're after. For us, at least, it's we're trying to investigate, see what we can find, and maybe help some people. Realistically, we don't ask for any money to do that. that makes sense. I mean, it shows like when it's a real passion and just trying to find answers. I love yeah. that. Um, I'm going to quickly make sure that there is no students on Zoom or students in the classroom that have any more questions. Nope. Um, then I kind of have one closing question, but before I get into that, is there any more kind of stories or equipment or anything else that you feel when talking about, you know, the paranormal and things behind it, um, that you would wish to tell us about? Um, well, we do not carry proton packs. I can say that much, and I may or may not be dating myself based on that reference. Um, <laughs> Honestly, a lot of the memories I have from doing these investigations, they're not always just the investigations. It's it originally was started out with me and my friends, time spent with my friends. We didn't want to necessarily be playing video games all the time, which we did quite a bit of, but we would go do investigations, pretty much just go see what we can find. And more often than not, the phrase, it's not the destination is the journey proved true. We had quite a lot of uh, fun and interesting interactions just getting to some of the places. And those are probably some of the better memories that I've had from investigating. Um, as for equipment, I can say this much, usually setting up takes far longer than Ghost Hunters or any of those shows will show. Usually they, if anything, they'll show like a two minute montage of setting up Realistically, it usually takes us about as long to set up and tear down as it does to actually investigate, and that's usually a couple hours. So that's one part they definitely uh, leave out. Granted, that has been a lot better recently since we've stopped having cables everywhere, which that was originally one of the safety concerns was tripping over a cable, which we did have one instance where a uh, one of the private homes we went to had, the owner had a couple dogs, said dog, knocked over a camera. Unfortunately, we didn't realize that's what happened because we're looking at the camera going crazy all over the place and once we go check it out, we realize it's just dangling there because it was hung, hung, hung by its cord and the dog had just knocked it over. So we were getting very excited thinking we had evidence of the paranormal and it was just a dog, unfortunately. Um, so then you've actually kind of already partially answered in a way kind of my last question which is more just is there any kind of overall advice that you have since of course you're speaking with some high schoolers that um they're juniors and seniors so they're about to graduate and go out into the real world as it were um is there any overall general knowledge advice that you have for them if this is something you want to do do it. You don't need to have as many, as extravagant of equipment as you might think. It, a couple odds and ends. You're, honestly, your smartphone will cover most of it. I mean, if it's something you want to do, we were able to go out and investigate different places without having all this fancy equipment. Uh, granted, in our younger years, there was probably some places we shouldn't have investigated, and I'll just leave it at that for various reasons, most of which are not paranormal, partially coyotes, but uh, if it's something you wanna do, just do it. And I guarantee if you find, you'll find some people that are interested, very rarely if you talk to anyone about this, that you'll find someone like me that said, no, I haven't had any experiences. More often than not, you'll find someone that 
maybe not as willing to tell you about their experience, but they would definitely be agreeing with you and they say, yes, there's something out there.